Thank you so much for tuning in. I am April Evans, your correspondent for today for this Sunday recap with Changing Your Mind Ministries, the place where you ought to have been this Sunday. And this is our pastor, Pastor Wendell Jones. We are so excited that you decided to tune in with us as we recap today's message. Yes, and it was titled what? What was the title? How to read. <laughs> How to recover. How to recover. And we're recovering. That was some, a good recovery right there. That was a good recovery right there. <laughs> um, and as we always ask you to do every single Sunday, we want you to go and go to our Facebook page, like today's message. But in addition to that, go to our YouTube page at We Are CYM and view the message in its entirety. But while you are viewing live right now, we want you to go ahead and have a viewing party. Yes, yes. Click that. When you share, hit view, watch party, and it'll allow other people to come on and watch it with you. So we appreciate that. And I'm actually going to go ahead and get started right now to do my watch party. Okay. Here we go. Starting right now. So we're going to give you an abbreviated uh, message today uh, from what happened in today's service, how to recover. And Pastor, you came from 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter, verse yes. number 8. Yes. Um, and David inquired of the Lord, yes. saying, shall I pursue this? Yes. Well, as my first said, this band, shall I overtake them? And he said to him, pursue, for you will surely overtake them, and you will surely recover, recover all. all. Now, I like that. I really did like that. Um, so the first thing that you began to teach us today, Pastor, or before I even get to that, um, tell us about the calling finding David. Oh, man. Man, yeah. that was a quick um, little nugget that you gave us, too. You know, David was on the run from, from Saul. As the text said, he found himself in the situation of the cave of Agilom, but the men who had formed a relationship with David went and found him. And that's so true about many of us. Many of us are on the run from the very thing we've been made to do. What? But God will send the people that need us after us. And sometimes you're frustrated with that. You hope people will leave you alone, but they keep showing up asking you for help because they figured out that you're a source when you're in denial that you are. And so quit running from the thing that God's called you to because it might track you down in your cave, too. Well, that's good stuff. Mm -hmm. So, Pastor, I know that when you when you teach, when you preach, uh, whenever you stand before anybody, you're always speaking to leaders. Yes. So your, your, your message is always framed around leaders. So for those of you who are listening and watching, you are leaders. So we are talking directly to you. Title or not, you are absolutely a leader. Yes. So, Pastor Jones, the first thing that David did in verse 8 was he inquired of the Lord. Yes. So you said that sometimes you have to ask the right questions. Well, life is really about asking the right questions. You'll never get the right answer unless you know how to formulate the right questions. And so questions stop you in your tracks, questions allow you to be focused so you can get the information you need to move forward. And so the first thing David asked is like, shall I pursue them? Shall I pursue them? And for Brian Bowie, he just tuned in. We appreciate you joining hey, in, my friend. Kenny Moore, Trina Saxon, so glad you guys have joined in as well. Dwight White, Lori Tate, uh, Brian Cobb, everybody's joining in past and watching Thank this viewing party. Um, so question number one. Could you tell us what's the first question that we should ask before I decide I've lost something, mm -hmm. um, something has been taken from me? What's the first question that, that I need to ask? Well, but, well, let's back up just a wee bit, April, because okay. I want them to understand about recovery oh, and what, yeah. what recovery really is about. Recover. Re, the prefix means again. So when I want to recover, and I'm sure everybody watching it has something in your life that you want to recover, some opportunity, some relationship, but you got to understand what recover really means. The prefix re means again. I'm asking God, can I have a chance to cover it again? But then we need to understand what cover means. Cover in the biblical sense means to protect. So I'm asking God, give, give me the opportunity to protect it again because I probably lost it because I did not adequately protect what was given to me. And so David is put in that position because the Amalekites have raided his village while he was gone. He took his people away from him. And so shall I recover means will you give me a chance to protect what got away from me? And so that's mm -hmm. where we are now. And so before I begin this, this pursuit of recovery, i got to talk to God right. i got to ask him some questions. Jeremiah said, ask, and I'll show you things that you never even imagined. So he asked this very important question. Uh, that leaders have to ask, regardless of the confusion going on around them, you have to ask these questions that sometimes shake up other people, but you know you need to ask God. He says, shall I pursue? That seems crazy to those who are being really emotional in highly emotional situations, because they're like, absolutely, why even ask that question? We need to go after our people. But what you have to understand is this. Sometimes your loss is an actual loss. You lost it. You didn't protect it right. 
But then on other occasions, sometimes what left you was God purging it. God took it. So you got to ask the question, do I even go after it? God, was this you or was this me? Did I lose it or did you take it? Because if God took it, you got to learn how to release it regardless of what the people around you are saying. And I promise you there are going to be some times in your life where something leaves you and it was a God thing, but the people will try to force you to go chase it. Mm. you got to be stable okay. enough within yourself, knowing that I got to adhere to the Word of God. He said, let it go. I'll let it go. So, Pastor, there was something else that you said when you posed the second question that you talked about, and you just touched on it. You said that if I want to be the person that God trusts with recovery, I have to know how to exercise emotional restraint. Yeah. So tell me about that. You said that we're going to be in some very highly emotional situations, especially if we if we see if we feel we have lost something that we yes. really wanted. There's going to be a, a lot of emotional intensity. Absolutely. So tell me the, about the importance in your mind about ha having to exercise emotional restraint. David had to restrain himself with everybody else around him in total chaos and confusion. The, lead, the purpose of the leader is not to join the band when everybody is freaking out. The leader has to be the semblance of calm, got to be the voice, the rational voice. I've got, and, and let me tell you guys, this is how you do it because as a leader, I don't want to lie to you and act like you're not going to be emotional. I'm not going to lie to you and say your title, your position stops you from being afraid, depressed, all of that stuff still happens to you. But as a leader, you have to learn how to place my responsibility above the moment. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm afraid, I still got responsibility. Even though I'm hurt, I still got responsibility. My duties didn't change. My callings didn't change because the circumstances have stirred up some emotions in me. A real leader knows how to feel it and still do what they're supposed to do. David still did his job. You have to learn how to strengthen that most muscle of, of emotional restraint and not allow your emotions to lead you so that you can still hear God. In the midst of that, David still had to hear God. He had to inquire of God, had to pursue God when everybody else wanted him to be emotional along with them. That alone was really good. Thank you. Um, and we have more to talk about. And we wish we could be before you all day today, but guess what? We can't. We have to go out and apply this very message that Pastor taught on today. But you can get this message in its entirety by going to our YouTube page at We Are CYM. You can even go back to our Facebook timeline and view the message. Better yet, come and be with us on Wednesday night. What's happening Wednesday? Bible study. We get in this thing and we break it down into bite-sized pieces and give you a chance to ask your questions. So if you go back and watch the, the sermon, you can formulate your questions between now and then. So you can come and be with us and ask those questions directly. We'd love to have you within our company so we can grow with you. So 7 o'clock, 9 Beth Drive here in Greenville. We'd love to see you. If you can't be here, yes, we'll be streaming. And so watch and learn. All right? Great. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Till next time. Much love.